some of the items that we get are just awe-inspiring. If you are looking at uh, medieval illuminations, uh, the skill level is, is just so high. It, it, it's hard to imagine. Um, some things have really low or no aesthetic value at all, um, but you realize that they're important on the historic side of things. We've had newspapers in from 9-11, headlines of 9-11, and medieval manuscripts uh, illustrating the torments of hell. So there is a massive range of things and the, the change in iconography that's happened, uh, what is interesting people and uh, what people decide to print, uh, it's definitely a fascinating thing. Often digitization is thought of as taking pictures of things, taking digital images of things and putting it online. And that is inevitably a key part of it. But I think people always underestimate the amount of work that is not taking photographs of things. A lot of the work that goes into digitization happens before the object even gets under the camera. One of the problems is that some of the books that we're filming um, might not have been read or might not have had every page looked through for many, many years or sometimes ever. And so um, sometimes the pages can be quite fragile. Um, so if a page is torn, we can, um, we can repair that tear using uh, wheat starch paste and sometimes we use a Japanese tissue uh, reinforcement or repair to do that and that makes the book a lot safer. We look for materials that won't discolour over time, that will remain as much as possible reversible so repairs can be removed in the future if necessary. We now have cradles that hold the book at a safe angle. We have uh, lights that are safe. We have um, staff who are very experienced in handling books and turning leaves. There's a, a, basically a piece of steel with perforations that's hooked up to a uh, basic vacuum cleaner and suction is applied to the folio, so it holds the folio in place without the need of bone folders and weights, any sort of restriction. What that does is it is allows you to get a very clean shot of the whole frame, um, and it's also quite gentle with, uh, with the folio itself. From an academic research standpoint, um, we need to provide images that are as close to the original as possible so that they can be used as, uh, as surrogate. We're not interested in uh, getting rid of the dust and scratches or the marks. Um, and on parchment you can see the follicles of the skin of the animal that was used. What we're doing is capturing the best and highest quality images we can, in part because we don't know what people are going to do with them. So we want to be able to reuse them. We all think back to a time before the iPhone was created and tend to think it was a long, long time ago. And I think what that says to us is that we don't know what the next thing will be, but as a library and as an institution that's been around for hundreds of years, we need to be prepared for it anyway. Um, there's also creating full text, marked up text, structured text, so that people can search things that weren't searchable. It's, it's where you start to allow a kind of access to the object that changes the kinds of research questions or potentially changes the kinds of research questions somebody could ask. So in some ways it shrinks time. It means that you can search across a corpus of texts and maybe accomplish what used to be 200 years of research in 20 minutes. And that's when things start to get really interesting. There are questions as to whether or not we should digitize everything and whether we physically can but we won't stop in that goal. On the one hand, every day we come in, we take pictures and we ship them. So in a sense, what we do is very simple. We copy things and give it to people. Um, but once you start looking at the processes and you start considering you know, what we're doing and how, to, how it ties in, we are aware that we are creating a legacy and that's uh, something that everybody values. One time, you know, people would have been debating the pros and cons of using clay tablets over papyrus. There were probably conferences where, you know, the old school was saying, well, you can't burn, you know, if there's a fire, you can't burn tablets. And the papyrus people are saying you can carry a library on a camel, you know, so we still have similar debates now. You're always trying to achieve perfection, um, but you're constantly looking for it as well, too.